Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day everybody. My name is Albert Tan. Welcome to this uh, session of Neuron Writer uh, Facebook Live session. And today we have actually invited the founder and CEO of this uh, Neuron Writer. Uh, he's none other than Power. So hi, how are you Power? Hi, hi. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. And how about you, Albert? Yeah, fine. Um, okay so let's uh, do some housekeeping uh, for the audience as well so guys if you can uh, see us and uh, what i call see our video as well as hear our voices you know uh, please type in the what i call in the chat uh, especially if you are in a facebook group please uh, give permission to this uh, web video uh, to actually show your name as well as also your profile photo so that we can know who is talking and who is chatting behind uh, in our backend. So I will just uh, put up the, the required link so that you know what to do. Okay, this is the link, you know, if you are in from Facebook group, you have to click this link to give permission to Facebook group to show your name as well as a photo. Okay, so guys, I see some of your uh, live chat already here. So Abhishek Anand, you know, and I think they have, uh, we have about 17 people already. So without further ado, I will just uh, do a warm up you know, with the uh, power. So power, let me ask you some simple question. You know, first, actually, where are you from? And why do you want to start this uh, Neuron Writer app? Okay, okay. So the story started because, um, Okay, so first of all, I would maybe introduce the team uh, because it will it will give you some kind of uh, overview uh, what we are doing uh, and, and why we are doing this, what we are doing. Uh, so first of all, we are working with uh, with my friend uh, Damian, uh, who is a CTO of uh, of Neuron, um, together about ten years. So we create already three products, which are which are well known on the Polish market and, and they were mostly based in, uh, I would say like, like in Europe. So we just, we just covered the Europe and the first one was, uh, was a, a tool for a backlink audit. So we just work on the backlinks and, and so on. And later we were working with customers and we understood it somewhere in 2018, we understood that for the large uh, content quantities, we need something more effective because we were already doing the content audits. And um, the storyline to be short was like this. I was working as a consultant. I'm still working as a consultant. And I have a lot of customers, enterprise customers with uh, huge websites. So for example, the website, which is like 200,000 URLs and, and the customer needs was like what we have, what we should uh, write, what we should optimize and so on and so on. So typical questions for the people who has a lot of content and they don't really know what is working, why this content is working, why not. And then we, you know, we decide that uh, if you would like to do um, a content audit in the right way, then you of course have to use semantics. Um, it was still before the, 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 the tools like, for example, uh, uh, yeah, I would say that the most of, of tools that you, that you know from the, from the LTD, they were known. So we started in 2018. In 2019, we had the first MVP and we were working on mostly on the, on the um, European market with the large uh, quantities of, uh, of content. And that was the storyline of the Contadu. And then we separated this year, we separate from a big package um, from Contadu platform, we separate a neuron and with neuron, which is very simplified version of the, of the Contadu editor, we went to, uh, to AppSumo to just uh, make it a little bit broader. So for us, it's, it's just uh, more like a test case when we can um, understand if our um, language models, if our if our approach is working correctly, yeah? because we have we are using our own language models, and uh, this is why you are seeing this kind of difference between us and different and different uh, tools. Uh, 
Um, and we are in the, so indeed the neuron as a part of the contado is three years old and neuron as a neuron it's a few months old to be, to be, um, to be specific. Uh, and we are a team of four right now, three to four uh, on payroll. And of course we have some kind of freelancers around us to help us with, with everything, but basically uh, it's a small team. It's a small team. So mm -hmm. a lot of challenges, especially now with the AppSumo, Facebook, and so on. Yes, uh, we spend a lot of time on um, on the customer service and uh, less than we would like to on the development. To be honest, yes. So <laughs> if you can ask less questions and be more specific, that will be much um, more helpful for us. Um, no. Okay, so done. Yes, okay. yes. No, no, no issue. You know. So we know that you are a small team, but a uh, small team doesn't mean that you have to be uh, with small, what I call ambition, you know? So may I know what is your vision of your this app, you know? Are you going to, you know, uh, make a lot of, uh, what they call, uh, big plans, you know, for this? Uh, maybe a few words about that, you know? What is your actually your future plan for this uh, Neuron Writer? Uh, so so in general, we believe that with the language model that we have and that we built very um, carefully on basically, we really spend a lot of time on the data quality and on the way how to make those uh, elements uh, in the language models uh, universal. The, 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 the main goal for us is to have a tool to build a tool of course this is like you know this is like a travel to the moon so it's easy to say <laughs> it's much much worse to to be there but indeed this this is what we would like to do and we would like to achieve in in, in a few years that we will be a very um a very i would say international tool for a semantic seo so doesn't matter which language you are using doesn't matter how many languages has your website? Uh, the neuron writer will be very helpful to optimize the content. And um, of course, we have to balance the way how we build the neuron writer because we already understood in those three years that this is what we built for the enterprise level and for the for the agency level. It wasn't really understood by the by the copywriters and SMBs. It was just too heavy, too hard. The process was unclear, and um, um, and this is why we are now trying to just simplify everything. Just take one piece of it and and just and just try to uh, give you something what can be self serviced, uh, like the new writer. And we are seeing right now that you you like it, so I like community like it. We still have some legacy in the, like for example, the projects are the legacy from the Contado, but I believe that's something that we will clarify during the next weeks and months, and we will try to understand what we can and how we can move the things between uh, between the tools and of course what we have to build up um, according to the roadmap and, um, to do not really overload the neuron and uh, still try to keep the simplicity that we have right now with as many details uh, uh, on the on the on the NLP or semantical side as we as we can. So I believe this is this is the main challenge. And for example, right now we are working on on adding the H3s, but we would like to already add also H4s, H5s, maybe H6. But we are struggling right now where to place this uh, this results. So this is just the work like how many information you should have according to this, how bloated uh, the interface will be. Yes, because of course, more information means that it will be just overloaded somehow. So we are struggling with this kind of, uh, this, this kind of issues. Okay. So I, I think that, you know, you are quite open to all the, what I call feedback, you know, from the AppSumo community and the LTD community. But personally, I feel that, you know, uh, anything, more than H4 is actually too many, you know, because usually people write, you know, content from H1, H2, H3. So anything that four, five or six could be overkill in my opinion, but that doesn't matter because oh. some people actually wrote that. So without further ado, let's go into the backend and let uh, you show us how to use these two in the most effective way, you know, uh, in the Neuron Writer. Yeah. Please share your sure. screen. 
Sure, sure, sure. I think so. I'm sharing already my screen. So do I? I think so. I do. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right now. Share your deck. Know. Okay. So I have a very quick, uh, very quick start for 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 all of you. So first of all, uh, it will be like five minutes. I will try to do this in five minutes. Uh, like what is the semantics and how semantics works and so on. So it's, it will be very, uh, very fast, quite technical. But anyway, so the Q and A. And the first of all, if it's working, yes, it's working. This is a. This is the screenshot from one of our LTD customers, uh, Fernando, to be honest. Uh, Frederico, sorry. Frederico, that was the Frederico. And Frederico just optimized homepage for for an affiliate page. And his traffic gets like 60% more traffic in one day. So just optimization. Uh, and it's affiliate, so it's not really easy niche, yes? Um, we have also the users from agencies which do something like from 16 to 1, from 12 to 1, with also something like a doc, uh, doc names, like a doc races and, and so on. So like Amstar, Border Collie, also very popular, very high, uh, very high um, volume keywords. I have here also one more from the enterprise. So we are working with Decathlon. Um, and in Decathlon, it was something like 40, 42 percent more um, more uh, traffic on um, on category pages. Okay, so first of all, if you are talking about the semantics, we have to understand how Google understands your content. So why the semantics is so important, and if you are doing something, so I mean, like if you are optimizing content or writing those H two, threes, fours, and so on why this is important and how to really understand this kind of uh, uh, communication between human and the machine because this is what we are doing right now is just communication between the machines indeed yes um so it's very simple so it's like on this on this on this meme it's like okay very simple like mm -hmm. it's a fake news if it's if it says something good about me it's 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 a very good journalist i like them if it's just something bad about me, well, I don't like it, and I just call it fake news. So Google works in the same way. If they understand what you are willing to say, they will just give you more credibility. They will just like you more than the people that they don't understand. Yes, because they don't really go deeper. I will just explain you how, how deep they go, but they don't really go deep into this, what you would like to say. They just try to uh, understand few elements from your whole vocabulary or whole sentences on the articles and just base it on these sentences they are building something which is called topical authority for your domain and so on so we are called we are all the time talking about something which is called nlp i think this is bloated but anyway this is how the community is right now using the nlp form and nlp is just natural language processing so this is just the way how we transfer the human language into the vectorized mathematical models so machines can understand the language and uh, that's all so when we are talking about the nlp what kind of nlp you are using or what kind of nlp engine you are using and so on and so on all of this from technical point of view it's wrong because nlp is just a processing so everything what we do with the language to make it so just to process it it's just nlp yes so in, in nlp you have also a big big chunk of nlp it's something which is called nlu and this is language understanding and this is what we do more yes so the processing is a little bit more like a background so like how to cut this into entities and then nlu is like understanding what the entities means what are the relations between the entities what are your topical authorities, for example, according to the entities that we extract from your website. So this is NLU, understanding machines will understand what you are talking about. And then we have also NLG, it's not on the slide, but we also have NLG, and NLG is language generation. So it means like we, um, the machine can um, um, generate the language because they understand already the language very well. So they understand what will be the next sentence, for example, in the, in the uh, well, sorry, next word in the sentence, or what could be the next paragraph after the three or four paragraphs, yes. So they really understand the language already, and they 
start or try to start or start uh, generate the language uh, the language um, uh, for us the language the language is the output so they generate the text uh, as as a as a language okay and how this works very briefly so first of all uh, if you have a document and document I mean it's it could be because the document is something which is uh, internal language uh, in, internal names from Google so they don't talk about the URLs, they don't talk about, you know, subdomains and so on. They talk about the document. So document is every time when you have a single uh, URL and they have a unique piece of content. This is the document. So they are referring to the document. And this is what, uh, what happens is they, they, first of all, they, they, they crawl the raw text. Then they, uh, they split this into the sentences. They, they, they do tokenization and tokenization it means that like they cut out from the sentence parts which are called entities, then they are tagging those entities, then they are detecting which are the entities, like if, what kind of word it is, do we have already the meaning for this word, if for example it's a, like let's say like our president, the, um, John Biden for example from US, do we know this person or it's a person do we know this person how it's related with and so on and so on so this is the relation detection and then according to this they already understand about what the document is and how good this document um specify the topic so how um, good it is it's if you judge a book for example they will understand how good the book is about the specific topic yes and this is what they do later. So they have a single document and from the single documents, they build something which is called a document repository. So they have all these documents, they put them into the repository and they, then they have a, a big lexicon of all the documents because the, every document bring them a little bit of the language understanding, yes? So they understand, okay, document one, they wrote something about president. Document two, also about the president, something more, more relation, more relations. So this is called lexicon in the Google words. And Google built those lexicons. This is like a topical lexicons. They build those lexicons and then they compare your, compare your query or compare your document to the lexicon as well. And how this lexicon is compared to your query. So as you can see here, we have a document and on, on the document level, they recognize the entities and they give to each uh, entity some kind of qualifying score. So the quali uh, qualification score could be like, okay, in 22%, we are sure that this document is about tropical fish. Yes, in 8%, it's talking about the sea weights and 4%, we are thinking about this work, uh, it's talking about the surfboards. This is how they map the document and the entities and how they give the uh, the metrics, which are of course mathematical metrics, how far the entities are from each other and how far the documents are from each other in the lexicon. And then when you are asking the query, they do the same with your query. So they are just trying to understand what you're asking about. And here, if you are asking about, for example, tropical fish, how much it costs, they understand that in 9, 9%, for example, 9% or 9 points, it's about a tropical fish. And this is what they do later. They just uh, uh, find the best matching documents for a specific query. So if you your query is very specific and your document is very specific, that the query and document matching will be very, very high. And this is what we do uh, in, uh, in semantical SEO, I would say so, because it's also a new term, but that's that's where we use the semantics to talk to the machines in more understandable way for the machines. So this is why we try right now to map the content in the way that the machines will understand the content better, and also that they will give us higher content scores. We, of course, they are they they use the document score. But the document score is a general score for a document, and then they also have some kind of entity score. An entity score in the in the document is is this what we are seeing here. But anyway, we are calling this on the semantical SEO content score, and the content score means like this is of course our internal metrics, uh, like how well the 
content, the article feeds into the recommendation system for, for let's say, Google or any other language um, search engine, yeah, because it's only text search engine. Um, and what we can do to to just make it better yes so if you need more information about this of course i can i can go over but uh, this is just a very briefly and then why also this is uh, this is important because the second element so there are three main elements that google google use so first one uh, it's a content uh, document uh, uh, score the second one it's an intent understanding so how well we understand the intent and third one, it's um, document type, because some types of the documents are filled much better the user intent than the other other ones. And those three elements are the core of every semantic uh, optimization that you will ever need to know. So your document quality, intent uh, understanding, and document type. And in general, Google says like they do a very, very um, easy uh, split about the, the user intent, like a no, do, website, in person. Um, but in general, mostly what we do on SEO level, we do the we do the content for the for the informational queries, which is like a new. I would like to new. I need some kind of guidelines. I need some kind of I don't know how to do it, and so on and so on. And also the products, which are mostly on the do query, yes, like okay, I would like to buy, I would, I would like to know the price, and so on and so on. So that's something that, in the semantical cell, is very popular, and that's what we what we do. And if they have this information, this this what they do on the end. Well, I mean the Google search engine, what what uh, what they do, they just render the SERP. So they render the page with the results, and they take the best results as a document. And of course, they enrich the SERP layout with extra elements. So for example, if they already understand that somebody is asking for the movie, they will already have an EMDB database. So they will pull some images. They will pull maybe trailers, trailers and so on and so on. So, um, so they will have a lot of information about this, what the user, how to fulfill the user need and what will be successful if they display this uh, this kind of uh, information. And then for us, the most important is that if in this, mostly it is, but if in this step layout there is organic, uh, organic uh, placement, then in this organic placement, the documents which are the best results for a single query, high quality results for the single query, they will be there and they will be rotated in the in the in this in this uh, in the SERP layout, okay, and this is just like uh, the difference between the SERP layout according to this user intent movie and user intent product. So I believe right now you understand uh, why this is working. Yes, because we are optimizing the quality of the document, and machines are understanding the document much better. And also, you have the ability in the tools like Neuron to understand the user needs better and how they asking for specific things. What is the user intent? And also this is what we do in the neuron. We, first of all, we are asking you, hey, what kind of document you would like to create? Because this is also something that could be very important because with some types of the documents, you cannot rank. So for example, if you like here, if you have a keyword like instant pot and you will say like, okay, I will, I would like to rank with instant pot and I will write, I don't know, um, um, for example, a blog post, then probably you cannot rank with the blog post um, higher than top 30 or, or top 40 for this, for this keyword, because mostly it will be a product page or it will be a category page. So this is very, very important to understand the topic, uh, uh, the, the type of the document, and also to understand user intent and the document quality okay and then let's let's go a short uh, overview how we map this as a process in the neuron so if you do the new analysis uh, you have option to let's say uh, what we will do here adidas okay uh, let me choose okay so let's say you are going to uh, choose uh, 
best yeah okay best running shoes for example yeah, that's something that could be um so you would like to rank um, or improve your content for best running shoes um you can choose the the, the um, google engine you can choose language and in advanced settings you can add additional keywords so what are the additional keywords additional keywords are the keywords that you would like to add to the article so you already understand that there are some keywords that should be also treated as very important but competitors may do not use them and we what we do with those keywords we treat those keywords so maybe i will just paste some uh best adidas um, uh, of course there should be shoes here so this is what we will do here we will uh we will use these keywords as a keywords which should be supportive for your for your content so if we don't find those keywords on the competitor websites we will add them so you have to use them or at least you should use them and um, if we find those keywords on your competitor um, websites then we will just increase the number of the users then so we will we will say you yes hey uh, 2022 is very important it's the year that the model new models came out and so so um so use it if you like you can create multiple analyses and then you just do like keyword one keyword two keyword three and then of course it's it's uh, it's a little bit faster but um, on when you're just starting i don't uh, advise this so so just do one by one and then you just create a start and this is what we do during this few seconds uh we go to google we crawl the top 100 first from top 100 we understand who is where what are the like what kind of results are there what kind of snippets we have what is the SERP layout in general so this is what we were talking about yes what is important what is not important and also we are visiting every page from top 100 uh, top 30 pages so uh, we just visit every from one, one from top 30 and we um, and we crawl the, those pages and we extract uh, also data from those pages to understand how they cover the uh, the topic why google and uh, why google promote them so why google recommended the content because sometimes the content recommendations are based only on the content quality and sometimes they are based on the content quality plus external factors i mean the factors like the topical authority of the domain and so on but anyway this is what happening and then if you just open the the analyze can choose what kind of content so you can choose or you have to understand what kind of content you have to create to um, have a chances to be in the top 10 and here as you can see everything here is just like a comparison pages uh 10 27 and so on and so on and we have this 2022 so we already understand that the content that we should create the type of content type of page it should be a um we can we we, we call this just a review or comparison page but it could be hold, hosted on the blog or it could be hosted just a landing page so this is what is the most important we need kind of landing page where we will list at least few different models of the shoes and explain why they are the best of course you can click here and open just a, a few pages to to understand what kind of content google promotes so this is our content so you have already understanding what the users need because the users are voting in the serbs for a specific content and then this is what you can do also you can um, just specify who is your real competitor so if you see that there are some pages which are not your competitor like for example telegraph CR UK, i don't know maybe yes maybe not but that's something that you can just say like okay this is not my real competitor or they are not writing this what i would like to write and so on and so on you can choose the best content um so this is what you can choose it's the, the 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 best competitors 
in the content type that you would like to create or optimize. So you just say like, okay, uh, I would like to write a landing page uh, for for these 25 best running shoes, and that are the best landing pages about the with the same type about the about the running shoes, and and then just go next. And this is what happens now. We are recalculate the the analyze because it's of course the first the analyze is based on the top 30. But right now the recalculation means that we will just base all the recommendations only on the selected uh, uh, pages. So for example, here we have this Telegraph, uh, telegraph page. Um, it, uh, so the vocabulary from this page, it won't be taken into consideration. And this is what we do from the, um, from the competitors and you have them always here. So you have here this custom selection. So that's our, our competitors you can always change them and just do the update. And of course, if you if they find your page, if you find your page on, on for example, number four or number three, then you always take the, 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 the URLs which are higher and maybe few which has a, a better quality score, content score. Um, and then we have this uh, uh, two type of, uh, um, of the recommendations. So in the sidebar, um, I will just start maybe from yeah, so I will just start from a draft. It will be easier. So you have two options. So first option is I would like to create a new content piece. So I don't have it. In this case, Adidas don't have anything which is very well for best running shoes. They just don't have the content which is ranking in top 30. You can always check if they are ranking in top 100. They are not ranking in top 100. So if you are ranking, it will be here. Map it like, okay, you are ranking on number 63 or something like this. So they don't have a content, yes. We can always check if there is any content. I mean, because if you are not ranking top 100, but maybe you have some content, yes. So you can always use this, this uh, uh, icon here and you can just pull some data from, uh, from Google index and uh, we have some suggestions. There's like a blog, the best running shoes for long distance, how to choose running shoes, best sellings, woman running shoes, and so on. So they have some kind of comparison pages for best running shoes, but they don't rank for the best running shoes yet. Uh, and probably this is because they don't really have a content for it. So if you look for it, because that, that are the best URLs when you ask for the best running shoes from on the on the Adidas.com website, then you can understand they don't really have the specific URL for this for this uh, for this query. Yes. Um, so we let's say we would like to do this this uh, best running shoes um, uh, URL. Now here you have this additional keywords here, so that they are here. Uh, as you can see here is the 2022 or whatever. So it's, it was added here somewhere. Um, so if you don't have the content, then you start from the draft. Uh, we will, we are right now reconsidering how to build the draft. So it will be built somewhere here in the sidebar. So we will have a draft somewhere, somewhere here. And it will be mm, connected straight to the editor. Yes, so that's something that we will work on just after we do the first the first uh, uh, elements from the roadmap. But in general, it will probably work similar, but it will be much easier to work with because it will be already on the sidebar and you can just place um, element by element into the text. Right now, the working with the draft, it's a work for um, new content. So this is how we how we how we build it, and then if you are on the content level on the on the draft level, you just uh, start with the headers. Yes, like okay, uh, it's worth to buy. What kind of there are for me? What are the best ones? And so on. How much it costs uh, for the gym and so on and so on. I believe you are you understand this and you are familiar with this how to really build this document structure. So this is what we are doing right now. We are just choosing the uh, competitors headers. We are choosing the questions from users. So that are the questions from Google. So 
for example, ASIC, yeah, like some some kind of some kind of brands. They are good or they are bad, and uh, um, yeah, there are some very specific question like for heavy guys like what are the best ones for heavy person um or do do i need them for jogging or can i i don't know the trainers or whatever so you just build your document outline and you can add as many as you like um and of course you can also search for for example like uh, like how yes and you have all the house and why's and, and so on and so on so you have you have a lot of opportunities here, and if you like, you can also look on the H1s from the competitors. We, yeah, yeah, of course you can do this. Um, on the meta level, you can also look what the competitors are doing. Uh, if you like, you can temporarily just use uh, uh, competitors um, title and competitors description, for example. Of course, you have to rewrite this because uh, that's not something that we um, advise to use, but just for this purpose, for, for just quick start, I'm using this, but of course, that's something that is just for your idea. So you understand what kind of uh, uh, subjects they have, what kind of titles they have, which are click worthy, yes? because the click worthiness is something very important. So what they do that the people are clicking on the SERP results. Yes, so what, for example, the runners were did or run repeat or acquire and so on, that was worthy the click from the user. So that's your starting point. You uh, understand uh, what are the best uh, possible matches for the title description, what should be your article outline, and then you copy everything to the editor. And then in editor, you have a meta, you have a content, and we already will tell you what is missing. So if you have any kind of content in the editor, you can always check the content quality with uh, with the checklist. So we will tell you, okay, you still need, for example, H1, you need still some more text and more extended, more basic and so on and so on. So that's something that you can check on any kind of content, also on the competitor's content. So you can place here any kind of content, and the quality score, uh, the content score will will uh, will uh, be uh, visible and will be counted. And then, uh, what are the next steps? So the first of all, the next steps are should be based on the um, on the checklist. So already you understand. Okay, I need the H1. Yeah? So Let's start with the H1. The H1 is something where we always should use the main keyword. So best running shoes for 2022 or best running shoes models for 2022. And already our content score went up. As you can see, we are giving you a lot of points for the document structure. Uh, and document meta, and why this is so? Because Google, when they understand the documents, they, first of all, this is what they index, it's a document structure. So a good document structure, it's really something where they give a lot of scoring on, yes? So if your meta title is a click worthy, this is the first, and the second, because they, if, if, if they knew that the first robot, they will just uh, understand what you have on the meta level. And then they will say, okay, this is the page about X, Y, Z, and this is what they are saying. So, and please scan it and go it through the semantical, uh, so the language understanding is yes, through semantical models. And uh, we will we will have more information after the second, third, fourth scan because there are different crawlers and they are crawling different things like images, text, and some kind of extra extra elements on the on the on the page. Um, so also in the same way we are giving you points. So we are giving you points where we start from these uh, most important elements. And then we also look on the on the content quality uh, level. Yes. So on the content quality, um, of course, you can very easily generate the text here. But on the content quality, uh, we have two types of uh, recommendations, and we split them into the recommendations which are like quantity and the quality. 
So if you if you look on the quantity, it's a sidebar here. So what should I write and how often should I write it? So and we understand, okay, I should write the, the word Adidas between one and ten times. Yes, and why? Because the competitors do competitors, high ranking competitors are doing this the same way. Um, it doesn't mean that it's only this what you have to write, but this is just like the, the, the bare minimum. So we have the basic. Basic means this is like a basic school. So it's a very, I would say, very basic uh, um, content. Um, and of course, if you would like to have a content more rich, like um, have this kind of expertise, the authority and expertise, then you uh, should use this extended vocabulary. And extended vocabulary means we found these keywords, we found these terms on competitors' website as well, in our language model as well, but they are not really often. So always you can just click like perfect running, you can click and here we have the information for you that 23 of competitors use the term in the text and they are using this one time. So it's one of five websites which are using this, uh, this keyword in the text. Here, if you would like to compare, you can just compare for something like runner and you see that 7% of competitors has this in the H2s and 100 competitors has this in the in the content, in the in just in the in the text. So you already understand from where we we took this this um, uh, recommendations. And if you would like to write the article, we always recommend to start from the extended keywords, because if you start from the extended keywords those basic keywords will just fill themselves. So it's the same like you are writing the, the articles or, or the story for your high, uh, high school degree or for the basic school degree. So if you are writing for the high school, anyway, you have to use the words which are in the base, basic school as well. Yes. So then we say like, okay, neutral shoes, like best running shoes, flat feet and so on. And then of course, if you are saying something like about the flat feet, the feet, which probably is somewhere here, will be also used, yes, and so on and so on. And then this is the best way to, to fill the content starting from the extended because later you don't have to do this. And also it's way easier because if you do first the basic keywords, then sometimes it's very difficult later to add the extended keywords because you already have, for example, used uh, a word uh, like a um, race shoe you use already four times and then you have to use a race shoe again here because there is a race shoe here one or two times and then you have to rewrite the content to fit to the specific keyword. We are still on the quantity metrics. On the quantity metrics we also give you the information about um, maybe I will write some text. I will just, I'm, I'm lazy, so I will use the, the NLP for me. So it is worth the buying, or I will just say like to buy or to invest uh, running shoes. And uh, because here we have the quality metrics. So the quality metrics means like what kind of headers you should have, where those headers should be placed into the document. And what kind of keywords should be into those into those paragraphs? Uh, why this is important? I will just generate. In the meantime, I'll generate the text because on the on the sidebar when we have this, okay, I will just use this one um, because on the sidebar we are just using the uh, uh, the quantity metric. So we are just telling you like use the word. Uh, 2022 between one to three times, but we don't really say to you where it should be used or how it should be used. And this is very important. So if we say like, yeah, the shoe, this is the most important word here or running shoe, this is the most important word here. And if you just use this 45 times in a footer or in the paragraphs, which, which is not visible in the, in the above default, then of course the uh, 
the, the quality of the content will be about the something else. So Google will understand that you have a lot of information about the, let's say, running shoes, but they are they are not as important as other keywords, which are much higher. Yes. So it's again like an ebook. Yes. If you have write an ebook about, let's say, SEO, then you have to have a chapters in a specific yeah, in the specific flow. And also those chapters has to be filled in a specific content. Yes. So if you have a ebook about the SEO and you start from the chapter like what is the uh, sitemap, uh, then probably the user will think that this is about the sitemap, not about the SEO. So this means very much if your first paragraph is what is the, uh, the, 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 the best running shoes or, for example, how to choose the, uh, the, the shoes for, um, um, I don't know, heavy, 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 um, uh, heavy marathon, yes? Because the running shoes and the marathon shoes probably something else, yes? So this is really, really very important how you build your article um, quality according to, uh, to, the, um, to the headers and also the, the keywords which are in the specific paragraphs. Because we have right now the passage indexing and Google really understand every element on your content. So first, this is what they do. They extract the, the, the text from, from the HTML, and then they understand the document uh, topical authority. So they understand about what the document is, and then they pick up parts of the documents which are related to the specific subject. So for example, you, your document can be like in this case about the best running shoes, and in the middle of the document, you have something like, yeah, go and buy a food, uh, a food for a dog. Then we'll, they, they don't will, will even index this one. So they will just say like, okay, this is not related. This is part of the content, which is not related to the topic of the document. And we will just skip it. We will not even take it into the consideration. So they just ignore this part of the, of the content. So this is really important to be very specific and to have this kind of uh, document flow uh, according to this, how you would like to see, I'm, I'm always referring to kind of ebook, but yeah, how you would like to build an ebook out of this of this article. Okay, and I was uh, I was saying about uh, this um, this uh, um, quantity metric. So the quality metrics are here, mostly in the beta generate, um, and uh, this is the quantity. Like, okay, I should write so many times um, a single word. And we also give you the opportunity that you can write in more natural, natural language. And that's something that probably only we do. So we are saying you like, yeah, if you just use best or good is the same because Google understand that you are just happy with the, with the quality. And if you just write the shoes, shoes or, or whatever, it's, it's still the same because this is what Google does. They do some kind of... Um, Un, uh, they, they unify the, the, the entities, so they understand that the shoes, shoes, and um, all these all this forms are, are exactly the same. They have the same meaning. Uh, so you are free, really free, to, to write your content in a very, very natural way. So you don't have to use exact, and we don't really like to use exact, to be honest, because we don't really believe that it looks natural. If you say natural, the same kind of, you know, if if you just compare top 10 and every top 10 article has the same amount of, of specific keywords, it looks very unnatural. So we don't really believe in this. We, we believe that you have to, you have the right to, to just create your content on in the way how you like it. And we will just support you with the, with the semantical, uh, with the semantical models. Um, and those models are those those uh, uh, recommendations are on two levels because then later we can of course check so we have the uh, the, the 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 meta level let's say we have uh, it's okay yes uh, then we understand that okay we have meta title meta description and then we still need some more uh, h2s we need more basic text we need more extended text that's something that we that we surely need to fulfill the to fulfill the, uh, the, uh, the document quality. So I will just generate some uh, few other paragraphs. Uh, right now, just in the meantime, I will tell you that we just improved this uh, generation's uh, 
so NLG, yes, so language generation, uh, like language generation uh, models, and they should be more precise uh, in uh, different languages than English. So if you are using other language than English, um, try to use them again because the quality right now should be much better. Of course, you can check change the headings here, and and uh, the, you can add your own keywords and so on and so on. So we are asking the um, the um, yeah, so the prompt to the NLG. Okay. So sometimes when you don't have this uh, the stems, it means that uh, probably we don't have the stems as well. So that's uh, that probably was the question from the Google um, from the Google recommendation. Something like uh, people also ask or something like that. Yes. Um, or the or the or the people ask also. So okay. Um, and then. So we are building this uh, this uh, document. More headers, as you can see already, it's 43. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, 43. So we are building more text, more headers, more keywords, and then always you can check like on the uh, headers terms what kind of headers I still need. Yes, best running shoes for women, stable running shoes for flat feet. Yes, you can always see okay how the competitors are doing this, and here is the. Here is the H2, for example, for memory peeps. And if you like this kind of usage, you can just copy, place it in the way where you would like to place it. Yes, just uh, uh, just make it H2, and then you will have you will have a next H2 filled in. Of course, you don't have to fill all the H2s. Uh, you don't have to use all terms for H1s. That are the, the best what we found on the competitor's website. But if you don't like them, you just like best rank shoes off, best rank shoes 2020. Yes. You can just say like, or 5K. You can just say like, okay, I don't really like it, or it's a competitor keyword, or it's not really something that I would anyway write about it. So then it's uh, way better if you just, I will just, because it's Adidas website and we will probably never never ever talk about the bag. Um, I will just, I can exclude this from suggestions, so I will do this right now. So as you can see, it's not anymore in the, in the, in the terms. And uh, you can have it right now here in settings. Uh, so you see, okay, there are some keywords which are excluded from this, from this, um, uh, from this analyze. You can always just click here and, and, and re-include them. Um, or you can also do something like, so I can re-include the Nike, let's say, let's push it back. So we have a Nike, Nike again. And then this is what you can do. You can just place this on the negative keyword list on the project level. So you say like, okay, our project is for Adidas. It's related to Adidas website. Of course, you don't have to use this if you don't use the, the, the projects in the way the, which are related to the domains. But you can say, OK, it's a negative keyword. We will never, ever use the Nike on any of our pages. And this what happens right now. It went to uh, project settings. And in the project settings, you have negative keywords. And here you have a negative keywords, which are, sorry, 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 here. Here it's a Nike as a negative keyword. And this means that if in any analysis in this project, the word Nike will be uh, some, or should be somehow displayed, it will be never ever visible here again. Doesn't matter what you do, you just, you just, uh, you just filter, filter it out. Um, okay, so what next? So first of all, you do this terms in headers, then you do terms in articles, yes? Then uh, if you are just, let's say, I would say like till 65, it's quite easy because you're just filling everything as should be filled, yes? Uh, above the 75, you probably you will start to have to think how to fill the gaps between. Mostly it's about the content um, quality. So more paragraphs, better content in the paragraphs and so on and so on. So for example, if you have like a shoe feed, I will just copy some part of the competitor website. Of course, this is not something that I 
But I'm saying that it's uh, that you should do. Of course not, because first of all, Google don't like it. We don't like it. Nobody likes it. But just for the uh, for this uh, for this yeah, right. uh, just for this uh, for this demo, I'm just telling you that yeah, you can you can go for 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 understanding how the competitors are using specific keywords. What are the Sometimes you have a very technical uh, vocabulary, so you don't really understand what they are meaning. By, for example, so, some type of food, you don't you don't really understand what is this. So you can always check how they cover the topic, what you can do, uh, what what you can do better, because it's always about making a better document than every other competitor does up to date. Yes. Yeah? So this is what we really what is our goal is to build the best document for uh, for a specific for a specific topic yes not for the keyword for a topic to be be very very precise we don't really care about the keyword here we care more about the topic as a topic what people are searching for when they are searching for best functions yes so this this is the vocabulary which is uh, which is used by by the customers okay later when you are still in need for for a more content, you can uh, you can use the content ideas. And the content ideas are the same ideas which are visible in the graph. So you can say, okay, uh, I still need something. Okay, what do I don't know? The, for example, here we have like some kind of oh, buying advice. It's like yeah. Then you can still use this kind of this kind of uh, headers and just go through those headers, make more content, because if this is related to the problem of your user, if this is related to your product, it's still related uh, to, to uh, our user intent. Yes? So you can just uh, make it better, uh, write it in, in your way, write it in the way how, that you think is the best. Um, and okay, and the next, uh, if you still have uh, uh, some um, doubts and also if you would like to have a more or better content than your competitors i al always advise to go further than the SERP results because this is what we are doing right now just from technical point of view we are writing the article based on uh, uh, on the selected competitors uh, terms so we are doing something like Google does. So Google try to understand what are the documents, what is the document topical authority, and what are the best documents from those documents that we have in the index. But this doesn't, of course, mean that any of those documents is a perfect one. It's not. And this is what we would like to do. We would like to build a perfect document. Because, for example, Google already can understand from the multiple documents that in this vocabulary, in this topic, there should be much more keywords and much more different um, user questions should be replied as well. Yes, this is why we, for example, here we have already 92 uh, questions from the users. Yes, it's a lot of them. Yes, but they are not covered yet for the bad me or. or if the word on her arches, you have a lot of those, yes. So they already understand what the people want, but they don't have the documents. They don't have the documents or the documents don't really write about it, what the people are searching for. But on the YouTube, you have a lot of information and those information on YouTube are very, very content rich. And Google is using right now the machine learning and the use and the language understanding from um, from of course from from videos to understand what is the topic of specific video yes so I don't really know if they are using this on the on the organic search level so they already try to cover the 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 topical authority, um, against the video of topical authority, so document against the against the video. That's something that I'm unsure of, but I'm sure of that they very well understand every topic, every popular topic they understand in 100%. And if you think about the niche topics, 
I would say that the, the, the ratio will be something like 20, 25% that they really understand the topic. But of course, the goal of the, of the Google is to very well understand every topic and also they will or they already use uh, every possible source together with together with uh, with the videos um, with the video video uh, elements so how uh, you can use this first of all you can just watch this through or you can just skip by sections or you can just use something for a captions and extract the captions to understand what are the elements there and you can enrich your document and then you will have a more uh informations on your on your document then it will be just more rich yeah so it will be more perfect um, than your competitors and if you are writing the content in different language than english or if the subject could be more popular than in english then also you can do the same um yeah you can do the same kind of analysis in a different language. So, for example, if you have the best running shoes, you can also ask what the people are thinking about the best running shoes, let's say, I don't know, in Mexico, for example. If there is a lot of people who are, who are running, oh, for example, there are some locations which are very popular. We are we were talking about the Albert, about diving, yes, um, because I, I, I used, to, used to dive in Malaysia. Uh, so, for example, uh, I'm right now based in Poland. So if you are asking about the free diving in Poland, the topic will be very teeny, I will say so, because there is no really the, the something like a free diving as a sport almost do not exist in Poland. And if it's existing, it exists as a competition in the swimming pools. So and then if you go to Malaysia or if you go to other tropical um, tropical locations for the for the free diving. They will be content rich. They will have, you know, a lot of different uh, equipment which is needed for 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 for, um, uh, for typical free diving. They will have a lot of expertise on the free diving. They will have also the interviews with the free divers and so on and so on. So the topic will be super rich. So if you would like to write about, for example, free diving, and you are just using your local search, then of course it's way better to switch um, and um, try to understand what the people are talking or what Google also understand in another language. Because later, I don't know, in a few years, Google will just uh, do something what they announced in, next, in uh, last year in the, in the uh, more, methodology, more methodology, which is called MAM. So it's like a universal modifiers, which is like the elements which are like integrates uh, integrates uh, um, multiple languages as well not only languages but they just they just would like to have something which will reply on any kind of user intent they are building this right now they are trying to build this um, so uh, so this is also what google understands yes yeah? so they of course right now they have different databases for every language but they in one day they will just combine everything together and uh, for example if you will look for a sushi uh, receipt uh, they maybe they give you the sushi receipt from japan and they will just translate the sushi uh, receipt for uh, to your to your um, to your language because that will be the best sushi receipt that uh, the people are voting on yes worldwide so they are going to this way it's not like uh, if it happens, it's more like when it will be available. There are already some um, some results when I see how this works. So it's already working some kind of niches, uh, but it's a long term. It's still still a long term because they have a big issue with the with the content quality, with the database quality. To be honest, yes. Uh, so this is what I would like to say. Like if you like, for example, do this free diving. And uh, then, of course, if you just go to, you know, we can do like, um, uh, let's say Malaysia in English, yes, and so on. So that's something that it will also help you to go above the top 
um, pages from the SERP results list. So again, if our goal is to create the most effective document, that Google will understand that this is the best ever ebook about the topic, then you have to use other sources than just the SERPs. Because the SERPs, that's something that they already knew. So in the SERPs, they will, you, you will just say exactly the same, just with different words, yes. And this is what you need. You need a paragraph, two paragraphs, three paragraphs, maybe five paragraphs more than your competitors have. More from, it could be from, uh, let's say, it could be from the headers. Let's say, okay, I'm going to pay party, pay, blah, 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 blah. Could be from the headers, but could be from the questions from the users, could be from the headers, could be also from external pages, uh, like, for example, yeah, yeah, like video pages and so on, yes. Um, um, okay, so here is the, the, the information about, uh, you know, yeah, maybe I will just take top 30 just to compare this. How many keywords you have in, uh, in Malaysia about free diving? And then I will just give you an example how many keywords we will have about, about free diving in Poland. So you can just compare this. Okay, so this is just uh, uh, 10 and then top 10. Um, okay, so and what next you can do? Uh, yeah, I believe that's all. Yeah, so we have also here the information about how long your article should be, uh, the readability. You can also set your own readability, your own uh, language uh, um, length uh, in words. Mostly here, it's also in the uh, like the what the median is. So you see, this is what we have in top ten, and I will just do one more in, 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 uh, just in Polish too just give you an overview how different it will be. Um, so if we dive in here, let's say, uh, oops, okay. Um, um, yeah, so I believe that's all, to be honest. So, we can dive into it, but I think we already we are already talking about one hour over one hour. So maybe this is the time for the questions from the users. But this what yeah what I can cover as well. It's like here you have the information what you have to do, and here you have the information why you have to do it. So you have all the information about uh, from where we have the data, what is the data structure. What are the differences between, for example, like the content length, the competitors level? What are the headers? Headers one, two, three. So this is something that you are uh, quite often asking. Like, yeah, I would like to know the headers to my competitors. They are here. We will make this uh, more visible on the grid level. Here is something that I also mentioned, like the SERP layout and features. So we try to understand if there are any HTML elements which are very important from the Google point of view, for example, calculators and, and so on, it will be always here. And then you have just information like why and how we did the, 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 the scoring. And also that was the question from someone, I think in, in, in your group, Albert, like how to find the next uh, topical uh, ideas and so on. You have them all here. So keyword ideas, here you have about 116 different searches and like uh, free diving, apnea free diving, you have a lot of different uh, keywords and similarities, how far they are to the, to, the, uh, to the topic that we are writing on. So if the similarity is lower than 20, that means already, you can already uh, uh, think about this as a separate article, like free diving certification, yes, or free diving training, or free diving gear, or yeah, training video course in the same way. So you can already think about this like a supporting, supporting article, and you can place this as um, as a something that could be good for uh, for next uh, for your next steps. So let's just see how different is this in Polish. Yeah, okay, top ten. So yeah, 
So yeah, well, it looks like it's the same. I mean, the number of the keywords is the same, but those are, I know the Polish, so I know that the, those are much more in, de uh, in details. And they are just like the very, very basic ones, yes. But anyway, they are very good, to be honest. Yes. We are even talking about the movie Great Blue, yes. So it's like, yes. yes, yes. Okay, time for questions. Mm. Okay. Any so, questions? Well, uh, there are a lot of questions, so, but I hope uh, we can answer all. If we cannot answer all, we can actually go back to our group, you know, uh, to see the question. So, but I will project the question, uh, those relevant and uh, most important question, okay? okay? So, I know that, you know, uh, this is already more than one and a half, one, and, one hour, 15 minutes. Uh, just bear with us. Uh, because uh, Powell is actually uh, very passionate about his project here. And this is a tool that, you know, he has spent a lot of time, you know, explaining the theory, you know, why you need to do this and all these things. So let's bear with us. I uh, hope to answer some of the most important questions. Let me project this thing up. Okay. I do not know who is this guy who asked this question, but never mind. Uh, can you see that, uh, Power? Yes, 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 I see, I see. Um, to, to be honest, the NLP, yes, the NLP, it's, as I mentioned on the beginning, the NLP, it's not really correct, uh, correct word to, to, it should be like a language model or language understanding that will be the correct uh, vocabulary here. But NLP is just a processing, just like a backend, yes. So I don't know really how they do the, 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 the processing of the data. Um, I believe we build the, 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 our, our models um, to be very, um, I would say very independent on the language. So we have about 170 models right now for, for 170 languages. And we are still learning because not every model is on the same quality level. For example, we right now have some users which are using the, the, the neuron entirely. And we were quite surprised by the feedback from those users that it's working very well in entirely or very well or well. It's the best that they say. Um, because really we build the we build the engine but we never ever test it because we don't have any clue how, how to test it without the native speaker so that's something that we it's, it's difficult for us um but yeah but uh, that's something that we that we do and some of the features i already explained you like for example we have this extensive model which don't really have to or push you into the writing the exact forms and so on and so on so I believe, and this is what we see already from from the from from your feedback, from the community feedback, that the uh, that the quality is okay, and that's something that we would like to keep on the keep going on the quality level, yes, because our main goal is to do not give you advices and to fight with the advices like let's create two thousand articles. We do not want to do this. We do not want to go into this kind of uh, content factory mode without even without even thinking why we are doing this and if this is necessary we will try to explain you just do one by one and just do this as a perfect uh, as a perfect document so that's this is our goal okay. uh Thank yeah you. if they if there will be enough votes uh, so we have the roadmap to, to just explain you how this works we have the roadmap you can add your wish on the roadmap and community voting on your on your on your ideas on your wishes if we have enough points from the community on something which is for example plagiarism or h2s or h5 whatever whatever is there on this on this on this wish list then we will consider this and we will just push this into the roadmap so everything can be possible from the technical point of view if the community say this is needed and the priority will be then and we have the time uh, to do this so to be honest it's like a community driven but of course we have to understand where are the priorities so if the community says 
here is the priority and we have two weeks of development, then we will go into the A, for example, yes, and then B and then C and so on. Uh, yes, so I will call yes, yes, much more than, than this, what is available. Okay. The new one right there. So next question is important, you know, so Ray was asking, how are you going to sustain unlimited team members and sharing? Um, Ray, I don't really believe that is the right question because we are our our costs are on the um, on the number of analyzes and number of uh, used tokens for GPT three. This is this what uh, what generates the cost, and it doesn't really matter from our perspective if if this is one user who generates twenty five articles or this is five users which generate five articles. So this is very fair share from our side that we do not really limit this. And we just give you the opportunity to work with as many colleagues as you want. But still, that's more on the co colleagues. Yes, you can. Uh, no, no, no. So sorry, I was too fast. <laughs> more content writer credits. Not yet. We are thinking about this, but we are not sure how to implement this yet. But probably there will be something like pay as you go credits for a content writer. Right now you can buy the credits for uh, content generation for NLG. So you can buy the credits for words. So for example, you have a limit of let's say 15,000 credits per month, which can be 15,000 words in the high quality model or 75,000 words in the lower quality model. And then you can buy quite cheap extra 50, for example, in pay as you go and pay as you go means that if you are short with the uh, with the NLG uh, one month, then you can use, for example, uh, I don't know, 1000 words from from this pay as you go. And then it will roll out until you still need it. Um, and so it will could be few months and then you are again short and then you say, OK, I need one more, uh, 1000 more or 2000 more, 2000 more. So it's like pay as you go and you can just buy this once and use it until you just use everything. So that means uh, there is no expiry on, on the credit, right? No, no, no. no. They, they, okay. are, they are rolling yeah. until, you, until you use them till, till yeah. the end. Because some, um, some other apps, uh, they, they have it, you know, you must uh, use it within a month or something like that, you know? Okay. So we have, of course, we have those as well. So we have something which is included in your monthly plans or monthly usage, but you have payments extra. And on those extra payments, they are rolling out. So they are, you can use Fair them as, when, whenever you like. Uh, fact checker. Uh, <laughs> if you find one which is working, give me, give me, give me a shot. Uh, I would like to see one fact checking. Fact checking it's even even difficult for for users. I mean, for the real human. And uh, um, so I can. Uh, from who was this question? Because you, you already just uh, you, you just so uh, okay. Uh, so anyway, from whoever asked this last question about the fact checking, please PM me, and I will give you a document. The link to the Google document. Oh, Ralph. Okay. So I will give you the, the link to the document and we have, can have a really long chat about the, uh, the way how Google see the future of the Google search and, and how they are willing to change from the uh, document-based uh, based index to fact-based index because the fact-checking is something that is right now the biggest issue on Google side because they cannot really do the fact checking. Because if you think about the language models, the language models do not really have information about a uh, document uh, source. So they understand, for example, that, for example, yeah, for example, the elephants eats 200 kilograms per day, but they cannot really tell you from where they knew it. Because this information, it's not really in the language models. So they will <laughs> say like, yeah, the, on the models they say it's 200 kilograms, but we cannot say who say this. And this expertise, it's something that is the biggest pain right now in Google. 
So can I say that you know uh, they can't actually differentiate fake news? Uh, <laughs> they can no, no, if you will be uh, so so uh, yeah, going into the conclusion. So they are using the sources which are trustful. So they they are using like they are using a common crowd or they so so they or we for building the models language models we are using something which is called like a common crowd or multi-text or whatever so there are big databases large databases like uh, wikipedia blogs books and so on and so on and of course this is a high quality content so this content don't really have the fake news but they don't really know if this is a fake news or not they just knew that it's quite popular in the in the base that they are learning from. Uh, what next? What other languages? How many languages are there? I, I think it will be the best if you just ask us if if the language is supported, and probably ninety five percent is supported. Okay. Because uh, as I told you, we have something like one hundred seventy plus languages. We have a table, but it's still not really shared with the users. And uh, I believe the best if you have some kind of dApps, if we, so surely 99% we are, uh, we uh, support your language, but the question more, it's like how good we support your language, because that's something that we already learned. Okay, this. the question suggestion, I think come from Google, if I'm not wrong. Yes, it's mostly from Google, and we are working already on the Quora and Reddit because that was something that... Okay, Quora and Reddit is Google. coming. That's good. I think somebody asked that as well. Yeah. Okay, this might sound, uh, I mean, whether you want to put your own URL in the listing, you know, for the competitors. Yeah, of course you can. So I, I if I understand this correctly, uh, should we unselect URLs that are ours in the listing? E, 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 yes, so, okay, I will just rephrase it. So I will show it. So for example, you have a, a, a we are talking about the top 30 and you have a blog page on the number four and the main domain on the number seven and you have some subdomain on number nine i wouldn't i wouldn't really uh, unselect them and uh, why because then we will because then yes of course that's, that's, it's not really clear here because then, if you would like to optimize one of those documents, then of course the selection should be there. Because otherwise, we will tell you to make these documents completely different. Because you know you will not have these recommendations, and the recommendations will be based only on your competitors. But if you would like to create a new document, then of course you can use it or not use it. That's that's really depend on you. But anyway, in 90% of cases, I will just keep it there if the quality is good and you would like to um, optimize this document. Yes. Because already you will import, I didn't really explain you how to import it, but yeah, I can share it again. But you can import this article and then of course you will have already the content score, let's say 73, yes. And then you just add a little bit more here, a little bit more there, and you are free to go with a higher quality content. Okay. Okay. This question is about uh, some icons, you know. So that means uh, just to make uh, yeah, the navigation I, better. I, hello, Francesco. Have you seen your 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 uh, case here on the beginning case? That was Francesco that I that I mentioned on the on the on the affiliate website, which was working so well. Um, so the question, uh, yes, uh, we are already collecting some feedback. In English, I would say we have something like 70% done. So we will try base it on the keywords which are used in the uh, header titles, uh, URLs, and so on, uh, figure it out what kind of uh, query it is. 
but it's not really clear and I don't know how this is going to work in the different languages than uh, English because this means that we have to have extra layer for every language with uh, this kind of uh, intent mapping, yes. So what intents maps to which keywords? Uh, can you put uh, mobile results, you know? Uh, I think this is NAS, if I'm not wrong, NAS is asking. Uh, well, we don't really have this icon yet, but if you like it, uh, I think it's quite easy to add it. Uh, so, uh, to be honest, we right now we are doing everything on true, true, true mobile. So we do not really split mobile, desktop, and so on. So we try to force mobile whenever we can, because this is the same way on how Google does it. But of course, uh, yeah, yeah, I will even write it down because of course that that should be something that you decide on which kind of. Uh, uh, of um, uh, yeah, of, uh, of a device we are going to, to check the, uh, the performance. Um, okay, so mobile. Okay, I was uh, scrolling to see the question because there are too many questions, so we can't finish everything. We just choose. Let's say we have still like 20 minutes or whatever you need and, and let's go through those questions and uh, yeah, I think I'm very, very, very happy with that. Oh. Okay. I see here that Samir is asking for what does the project mean? It's one domain, one project. This is a very common question and we knew that we are communicating this wrong. We are searching right now for a better way to communicate what the project is and so the project is more like a folder so you can keep in the project as many different um, analyzes as you like and they don't have to be related to a domain so for example if you have a tier one you have two projects right now yes from yesterday or day before yesterday we, we just introduced two projects on the tier one so you can just make a one project which will be called like everything inside and one project for your for your domain or one project for block one and one project for 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 the for someone something else and then if you just use the domain the right domain you will have some extras and those some extras will be like we will highlight your domain on the in the top 30 we will highlight your domain somewhere and so on and so on or for example we will keep the negative keywords on the domain level so you can use this. It's in some cases it's uh, it's nice to have, but it's not like a must to have. So you, if you have even after three years, let's say after three years, if you write twenty five articles each month, you will have a lot of articles. So they they still can be for multiple domains, for one hundred domains, they still can be in one folder, and you can just uh, uh, tag them differently. And filter them according to the tag, and that's that will be completely fine. And they will be as same, as same accurate and as on, on any other folder. So we we will try to explain this a little bit better in, in the uh, on the landing page what the what the project is. So the next question is uh, outline builder. You know, so there are actually some other apps that actually can can do that. Automatically, I, I believe what uh, mm -hmm. uh, Elian was talking about. Yeah, so so uh, we will rebuild the the draft mode or the outline builder because right now it's uh, just add-on to make things faster. But we understand that there is a need for a real one because this one is just like you know, it's something that we build, but it was never really pushed into the into the limits or as it should be so it's still yeah we are thinking about this more like a mvp not like a, the final builder um and the draft mode will be as i already told you will be included into the sidebar and will be more like just like some kind of builder where you can maybe even type the keyword and we will try to give you the 
uh, opportunities, what kind of headers you can include with this keyword, like similar to this, what we are doing right now in the draft mode, but it will be already in the editor. So it will already tell you like, okay, you have a missing uh, keyword in the H2 and that's are the opportunities uh, from the headers that you can add, you could add to, uh, to the content. So I believe that's something that it's a long time project. It's uh, probably a month, two months where it will be de delivered. But uh, yeah, but we understand that we have to rebuild it. So probably we will just add a few things on the current one. And in the meantime, we will just uh, just uh, do the, the new one. Yes, uh, that's uh, it's planet. It's on the it's uh, I believe quite high on the roadmap and it's easy to do. So we will do this internal linking, uh, internal linking. Right now you can use a little bit the internal linking when you are looking for this uh, um, um, discover URL, we call this discover URL. So we are talking about this orange bulb when you uh, have a top five uh, content pieces from your domain. Um, and of course, this is something which is your first step for the internal um to be honest, i don't know because this is already too difficult for some copywriters and we understand if we go further and we ask for more it will be more confusing for some of people which are not uh, as yeah. that could be so it's difficult if you if you give us some kind of you know the checklist that you would like to implement it will be easy to understand for your grandma, just send it and we will do it. Yes, but for now we are struggling how to make this checklist as easy as possible. Okay, uh, Pavel, I think we have to go into the giveaway before we end. Uh, it's taking ah, a little okay. bit long. So, okay, guys, uh, we have actually two prizes to be won. And if you don't win this uh, tonight, you know you can have another chance because you still can comment on the Facebook post. That will be have uh, three prizes to be won, so total five prizes. So today we are going to give away two prizes, and I would like to invite our uh, power to ask two questions. So whoever can answer that uh, question, uh, the first one to answer it correctly will win a prize. So we will start with the first question. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so first of all i will tr i will ask you because uh some of you still don't i don't know there, there's some kind of permissions albert yes here because still i see that some people are like have a connection with the facebook and some are some comments are just like you know comments only with the date so if you would like to just be a part of this contest then you have to connect somehow yeah because otherwise we don't know who is uh, giving the, the answers. Um, so please do that uh, if you can. Okay. And it will be, it will be. So the first one, the first one, and this is the who is faster than is swimming. If you can type what the bird is. So bird is something what Google introduced in 2018. It's a language model. So if you, if you just, uh, just say exactly what the bird means, you have a tier one. So one LTB code, ah, you are searching in Google now. Well, what is the bird? Copy paste. It started with B. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Nylon, if I'm correct. <laughs> did, did, I, did, 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 did I write your name correctly? I don't know, so I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Hummingbird, NLP, Hummingbird, Algorithm. So you see how difficult it is, how it, how difficult it's semantics. And we are talking about the checklist for copywriters. Okay, okay. Big bird, yes. So the so the bird is a big bird from from uh, from a season uh, season street. Yes, it was seasons. I don't I don't know. Uh, Paula, okay. Who, who yeah. is the winner? Who is the ah, so winner is the big winner is uh, I will just copy paste it. Okay, wait, I did something wrong because my chat is gone. Um, 
I believe it's it's a comment from 536 Nylan Grosh. If I pronounce it wrong, so sorry for that. It's it's really difficult with all these names. And also my name is always mispronounced. So I know I know the pain. So so sorry. If you would like to just catch me on the on the on the um, on the Facebook and I will give you the price and we can have also the chat. Uh, so I will understand well how to pronounce your name. Um, okay, so that was the so it's a tier one, a business intelligence and reporting tools. No, it's not that. Okay. Um, okay. And the second one, so the second one will be also like the, the, the I, I believe, the first one on the, the last one. Um, we have a new model, new model, which is called LAM, Lambda, Lambda. Uh, and this is a model from Google, which is like the creator of the of the um, uh, chatbots. And a few days ago, it was a discussion when one of the Google engineers <laughs> says that the Lambda is um, uh, is uh, self-aware. I would say so. Yes. Yeah? So uh, so when he do the chat with the Lambda, um, he understood that he she said that she had a soul and so on. And so on. She or he, I don't know be honest so the question will be what is the name of this engineer and uh, if he's still working in google yes or no yeah I, you, I you cannot in my group you, as well or no? you cannot I can't remember. This, yeah you cannot you cannot do this by heart surely that's google will which will help oh you we have an answer already yes it's like like lemon um, yes it's a black yes <laughs> was fired yes so we do we don't know only this is what they say so this is only um so i i believe it's, it's a very difficult story for google right now because uh, he could be he could be i don't know what they are going to do with this guy but he could be in a very difficult situation because he just take out out of google some kind of informations which are the google property like you know the internal chats uh, with the chatbot which is like the testing the software testing yes so um so that's uh that's a uh, that's a difficult story for google because on one side you are losing your technology which is leaking and on the other side the people are just going crazy with your technology which is also bad so i think they cannot win this situation so yeah so that's uh, that's quite difficult. Okay, and the winner here was um, the, 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 I believe Ray. Uh, just let's say yes, Ray, Ray five thirty nine, Ray Monkey, Monkey, Monkey. Okay. Okay. So we have the winners. Uh, first one is uh, Nilayan Gosh, you know, for the tier one, and uh, Ray Monkey will have the tier two uh, for the. Neuron yes, right. yes. Maybe. Just ping me. Just ping me on the on the Facebook, and I will give you the calls that you can use. And uh, that's uh, that's how this works. Yes. Okay, okay guys. so I hope I hope it was fun for you, for me as well. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry. 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 Okay. Sorry. So never mind. Uh, we have gone uh, one and a half, one hour and forty minutes. You know. So I, I would like to you know uh, say thank you to all the attendees who stay until now. You know, we have about forty over people at one time. So now we have thirty-seven. You know, thank you for your attendance and your attention. And I know that you know some of you are quite disappointed for not winning this prize. Uh, but I think I believe it's quite difficult. You know, the question. You know, but then. Uh, Power is a what they call a technical guy, you know. So he asks question that is uh, mm. quite difficult to answer. It's, it's it's Google, yeah. At least we are here on the you know we, we should understand how Google works and how to uh, how to ask the right <laughs> question to Google. So that was about uh, more or less about the knowledge and and more about your technical ability to uh, to do something quite. Uh, it's very important for Google and it's called Google information retrieval. So how to get the right information from uh, from noise. And that's that's something which is very important and what we what we learn on, uh, learn. So yeah, so thank you very much for, for the session. I hope you learn a lot. 
uh, I'm uh, if you would like to have something else like more questions and so on and so on just ping me on the on the Facebook we are quite responsive I hope so of course we are overloaded with all this what happens we are like I spend like a few hours daily on replying to uh, to you, all your emails questions and, 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 and comments so sometimes if this is just delayed sorry for that because we are just overloaded with the work as you know we are a small team um so so thank you so much and uh, have fun with the neuron and uh, just uh, do whatever you can to be uh, to to create this this uh, best content for you for your niche and be number one yeah okay so before i we actually conclude uh, i would like to say thank you to power again you know to come on board uh, with us and spend us uh, spend about two hours with us and we hope that you know uh, the audience are also uh, happy you know to have this session you know uh, it's a bit long but then uh, and all the question might not be answered uh, all but so maybe power will actually answer it in the chat you know uh, in the facebook group so with that uh, yeah. i would like to include this and thank you for coming and uh, you have a nice day you know everyone thank Bye -bye. you so much and um, yeah have a have a nice day too and yeah, thank you so much uh, albert for for having me and uh, yeah we will be in touch anyway and um, so uh now now again and ray please pee me on the facebook and i will give you the calls uh, right away thank you so much